Hi, and welcome to this video guide on how to use Agora's RTC Video SDK for iOS. We'll be following along with the quick start guide found in the documentation, to which there's a link below. Let's get started. This is the quick start guide for iOS, found via the navigation bar in the documentation to the left. The first thing you see is a diagram explaining how the technology works. In this diagram, we have two devices, client A and client B. They're both making requests to join a channel, as well as publishing and subscribing to each other's feeds. Here are some of the prerequisites, including Xcode, iOS 8 or higher, an internet connection, and an Agora developer account. The developer accounts are free, all you need to do is sign up with an email. A guide for creating an account, getting your app ID and temporary token can be found here in the guide too. Let's move on with the application setup. From Xcode, set up a new project. We're going to choose a basic iOS app and name it Agora iOS Quick Start. Once that's done, head back to the guide and see how to get the SDK integrated. There's a Swift Package Manager install, which keeps things super simple. Copy the URL from here, and back to Xcode, go to the project, Swift Packages, hit the plus icon, and paste that URL in. After a few seconds, it will ask which version of the SDK you want to install. We'll go with 3.5.0 for now, but always try to install the very latest version available. While that's installing, let's see what's next in the guide. Right, here it's telling us to add the microphone and camera usage descriptions to the info.plist. This is a requirement for any iOS app that uses those hardware. Back in Xcode, the install is done, hit finish, and then head to info.plist to add those descriptions. Scrolling down here, we find the camera usage entry, put something in there. Then again for the microphone entry, something in there describing why your app wants access. Go back to the view controller and let's see what's next in the guide. Creating the UI. The interface is very simple in this quick start guide. All we need to do is create a view for our local feed and one more for our remote feed. The two views are declared up here. Let's grab that and paste it into Xcode. Then, let's grab this chunk of code and I'll explain it from within Xcode. This method, init view, initializes the local and remote views. As you can see, they're just UI view objects. In view did layout subviews, the two views are positioned with the remote view filling the screen, and the local view fills this frame, which will position it at the top right of the screen. We'll see what this looks like a little bit later. The next thing we have to implement is the video call logic. There's another diagram here showing the API call sequence. First, the RTC engine is initialized. Video is enabled, local video is set up, we join the channel, then we receive a notification that another user has joined the channel, and then we set up the remote video feed. Let's copy this line, which will keep a reference to the RTC engine. Oh, we forgot to import the RTC SDK. Let's do that now. Grab the import code from the guide here and put it near the top of our view controller file. That the error is fixed. Now we need to initialize the engine and join the channel. We'll grab this whole function for now and dissect it in Xcode in a few moments. Another error will pop up as we're trying to use the view controller as the Agora engine delegate. To fix that, Let's just make an extension below, which adds a delegate class. We'll put any relevant delegate methods in this extension later. 
once again our app builds. You'll need to replace this with your Agora app ID, temporary token, and channel name. I'll just do a bit of tidying here to fit my preferred code style. If we take a look at what's going on here, we can see that the engine first gets initialized with an app ID and setting the delegate. Enable video enables the video and audio modules. Then we need to create an Agora RTC video canvas. This canvas is where our local video feed will be received and then projected onto our local view. The UID is set to zero, which means the local user. The render mode here is hidden, which means it will clip the edges to make sure the video fits within the UI view. We assign its view just below, which tells the canvas which UI view to project the video feed onto. And then we call set up local video. This now means we'll be able to see ourselves when in the channel. Finally, we join the channel with a temporary token, channel name or ID, and this callback method tells us the UID we have been randomly assigned. That is everything required to get us connected to the video channel. Now we haven't done anything with the remote camera feed yet, so so far users will only be able to hear each other but not see each other. Let's see how that's done in the next section. Now we want to take a look at this delegate method. Once again, copy the code and we'll take a look from inside Xcode. This delegate method is called whenever a remote user has joined the channel. And when we get this, we want to get their video feed and render it. Once again, we create an Agora video canvas, set the UID, which is given to us by the delegate method parameter, set the view to our remote view UI view, and call setup remote video. All the methods are in place. Now we just need to call our method which initializes the engine and joins the channel. In this guide, it's suggested that we add it to the view did load, so let's do that now. And finally, we should leave the channel and destroy the engine instance once we're done. In this example, we're going to put that into the view did disappear method. So we'll override the view did disappear method here, leave the channel without a completion block, stop the camera preview, and destroy the engine instance. That's it. All that's left to do now is test the app. This is what the application will look like when it's completed. And uh, we can see in the top right corner here, that's my local camera feed. I'm going to go ahead and connect with an Android simulator in a moment. Right, there it is. That's the um, Android simulator. Uh, camera feed. If I flip the camera on the simulator, we can look around this room. And as you can see, the remote camera feed is appearing in the full screen. And that's our completed app. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out the description for any useful links and leave a comment below if you have any suggestions. Be sure to like and subscribe and see you on the next one.